today I say to you, do not fornicate. Do not look round endeavoring to read the word lustful on somebody's face. Love one another. Would you love anyone who read that word on your face? No, you will not. Well then, do not try to read it in the worried eyes of your neighbor or on his forehead that blushes and bows to the ground. And then, oh, tell me especially you men, which of you has not tasted this bread, made with ashes and excrement, which is sexual satisfaction, and is last only what carries you for one hour between the arms of a prostitute, is lost not also the desecrated union with your wife, desecrated because it is ratified vice, as it is reciprocal sensual satisfaction, which however evades its consequences. Marriage means procreation, and its act means, and must be, fecundation. Otherwise, it is immoral. You must not make a brothel of your nuptial beds, and that is what they become if they are soiled by lust and are not consecrated by maternity. The earth does not reject the seed, it receives it and makes a plant of it. The seed does not escape from the furrow after being laid there, but it takes root at once and it strives to grow and bear fruit, that is the vegetable creature, born of the union between soil and seed. Man is the seed, woman is the soil, the fruit is the sun. It is sinful to refuse to bear fruits and scatter strength in vice. It is prostitution performed on the nuptial bed and in no way differs from the other prostitution. On the contrary, it is aggravated by disobedience to the commandment that says, Be one flesh and multiply by bearing children. Therefore, woman, deliberately barren, legal and honest wives in the eyes of the world, but not in the eyes of God, you can see that you may be considered prostitutes, and you fornicate just the same, even if only with your husbands, because you don't seek, you do not seek maternity, but too often you are only after pleasure, and do you not consider that pleasure is a poison that contaminates every mouth that tasted. It burns with fire, that seems to satisfy. Instead, it falls out of the fireplace and devours more and more insatiable, leaving a soul taste of ash, and the tongue as well as disgust, nausea, and contempt, both of oneself and of the partner in pleasure. Because when a con conscience revives, and it does revive between two hits, one can but feel such contempt of oneself, being lower below the level of beasts. You shall not fornicate, he said. A great deal of carnal actions of men are fornications, and I do not take into consideration the inconceivable obsessive union with Leviticus condemns with the following words. Man, you must not lie with a man as with a woman, and you must not lie with an animal. You will thereby become unclean. And woman will do likewise, and will not offer herself to an animal, because it will be a full thing. But after mentioning the duty of a husband and a wife in marriage, which is no longer holy when it becomes barren through malice, I am going to speak of the true and proper fornication between man and woman, performed out of reciprocal vice, or for compensation in money or in gifts. The human body is a magnificent temple that contains an altar. God should be on the altar, but God is not where there is corruption. Therefore, an impure body has a desecrated altar without God, like a drunken person who wallows in mire, and in the regurgitation of his own drunkenness, man lowers himself in the brutality of fornication and becomes worse than the most impure worm and beast. Tell me if among you there is anyone who has perverted himself 
to the extent of dealing with his body as one deals in father or animals as the market. Which benefit did he gain? Take your hearts in your hands, examine them, question them, listen to them, note their wounds, their pangs, and then tell me, was the fruit so sweet as to deserve such pain? To a heart that was born pure, and that you have compelled to live in an impure body, and to beat, to give life, and heat to lust, and to be worn out of by vice. Tell me, are you so perverted that you do not sob secretly, hearing the voice of a child calling, Mommy? Or thinking of your mothers, your woman of pleasure who have run away from home, or have been driven out of them, so that the rotten fruit may not contaminate with its oozing rottenness the other good ones? Thinking of you mothers who probably died broken-hearted having to say, I gave birth to disgrace. Do you not feel your hearts shudder with shame when you meet an old solemn-looking man because of his white hair and you consider that you have soiled your father's head with handfuls of mud and have exposed them to the scorn of their native country? Do you not feel your entrails white with regret when you see a happy wife or an innocent virgin and you have to say, I have given up all that I am and I will never be like that again? Do you not realize how miserable you are when you are thirsty for the kiss of a child and you dare not say, give me it? Because you have killed lives at their birth. You have rejected them as burning burdens and as a useless hindrance detached from the tree that had borne them and thrown out to make tongue and now those little lives shout at you murderers but above all are you not terrified of the judge who created you and is waiting for you to ask you what have you done of yourself did I perhaps give you life for that how dare you come to my presence, you nest swarming with worms and putrefaction? You have had everything on what was your God. Pleasure. Go to the place of eternal malediction. Who is weeping? Nobody. Are you saying nobody? And yet my soul is going to meet another soul that is weeping. Why is it going to meet her? to an uh, anathematize her because she's a prostitute? No. Because I feel sorry for her soul. I feel repulsion for all her filthy body, sweaty with wanton exertion, but her soul. Oh, Father, Father, also for this soul I have taken flesh, and I left heaven to be her Redeemer, and the Redeemer of many souls like hers. Why should I not pick up this stray ship and take her to the fold, clean her, unite her to the flock, give her pastures and a love as perfect as only mine can be, so different from the love that so far she called love, but instead was hatred, such a pitiful, complete, sweet love that she may no longer regret the past or may regret it only to say, too many days have I lost away from you, eternal beauty. Who will give me back the time I lost? How can I enjoy in the short time which is left to me, what I will have enjoyed if I had always been pure? And yet, O soul oppressed by all the lust of the world, do not weep, listen, you are a filthy rag, but you can become a flower again. You are a dunghill, but you can become a flower bed. You are an impure animal, but you can become an angel. Once you were an angel, and you used to dance on the flowerly meadows and rose amongst the roses, as fresh as they were, sweet smelling with virginity. And you happily sang your childish songs, and then you will run to your mother, to your father, and say to them, You are my love, 
and the invisible guardian who is at the side of each creature will smile at your blue white soul. And then, why? Why did you tear off your wings, those of a little innocent being? Why did you tread on the hearts of your father and mother to run after other reliable hearts? Why did you compel your pure voice to utter false sensual words? Why did you break the stem of the rose and desecrate yourself? Repent, daughter of God. Repentance invigorates, purifies, and elevates. Can man not forgive you? Not even your father could forgive you? But God can. Because the bounty of God is not to be compared to human goodness, and His mercy is infinitely greater than human misery. Honor yourself by making yourself honorable through the an honest life. Justify yourself with God, committing no more sins against your soul. Obtain from God a new name. That is what matters. You are vicious. Become honest. Become the sacrifice and the martyr of your repentance. You knew how to make a martyr of your heart to give pleasure to your flesh. Now, make a martyr of your flesh to give eternal peace to your heart. Go. You may all go away, each with his burdens and his thoughts and meditate. God awaits everybody and rejects none of those who repent. May God grant his light that you may know your souls. <laughs>